Welcome back to Once Upon a Shredder. My name is Lance Seconato. This is the review of the Kaizen 6 in Mint. All right, so let's get right into this. This is the Kaizen 6 in mint. I think the color looks more like baby blue, kind of a powder baby blue. It's a nice color. It's a limited color, apparently, at least according to the Sweetwater site where it says that once these are all sold out, that'll be it. I don't know whether Ernie Ball Music Man is going to offer this same color later from their site directly. I have no idea. I do like it. It's, uh, if you've seen my Kaizen 7 video, I have one of the signature Tobin Abasi Kaizen 7s, the one that actually has a signature on the back, limited edition. I did the video on that, which has done way better than I expected. When I put it out, I didn't, had no expectations at all. I think it was just a matter of timing. After I put that video out, a few weeks later, Ernie Ball Music Man introduced the six string version of the Kaizens, and then my video took off. So, you know, luck of the draw. But this video is to go over the features of this guitar, since that one was more of an exploratory purchase. This one was an informed purchase because I already had the Kaizen 7 and I really liked it. There are several features that Ernie Ball Music Man advertises for this guitar. One of them is the infinite radius neck, they call it, and or infinite radius fretboard. I'm not sure how they do it. I'm sure there's a little TM after infinite radius. Obviously, there's nothing infinite about it. What that means is it is a fretboard that is tilted slightly toward you so that when you're playing and looking down at the neck, it's fairly easy to see the neck. How they have accomplished this is twofold. First of all, the body of the Kaizen is so contoured, so it's ex really extremely contoured on the back. If you look at the back of a Kaizen, any of the pictures online, you will see that the carving and the, the contouring of the back is extreme compared to probably any other guitar you're going to see but it's extremely comfortable as well. That contouring causes the guitar itself to sit so nicely against your body that effectively when you look down, you can see the face of your guitar pretty well. On top of that, they have increased the thickness of the ebony on your fretboard by one or two millimeters. It's clear when I look at both sides of the fretboard that the ebony on the high E side is thicker by a couple millimeters probably, one or two millimeters, than it is on the low E side. Because the combination of those two things combined cause your, the neck to be more visible to you as you play. I've never heard of another company emphasizing that particular aspect of a fretboard, but I like it. It is fanned fret. It is multi-scale. Multi-scale as in the high E side is 24 and 3 quarter inches. That's Les Paul scale. The low E side is 25 and a half inches. That's Strat scale. So you get the combination, sort of the best of both worlds. And from my perspective, the, the fanned nature of the fretboard is not too much, it's not extreme. If it were a little more so, it would probably be a little fatiguing for me to have to bend my hand this way, right, because of the direction of the fanned, the fanned frets. But it's not, it's, it's, this is about as far as I'd want to go for, uh, for a fanned fret guitar in terms of the extremity of the fannedness of the fretboard. The frets are medium jumbo, they're steel, they're nice, they don't feel like they're too tall, they're not too short. All right, so I made a couple adjustments to the guitar after having it in the studio now for about two and a half weeks. When I received it, I did what Sweetwater recommends, which is I kept it in the box for 24 hours. And then after I took it out, I set it on a stand here. It's been in the studio for, like I said, two and a half weeks. I played it a few times since then. Yesterday morning when I was gearing up to start making the video for this guitar, I noticed that the relief on the neck needed to be adjusted the tiniest little bit. It wasn't much. So I adjusted the relief. It was a little concave. For some reason they call that up bow in the te guitar tech world where this is called back bow. But uh, I went ahead and I adjusted it so that it was to my liking. It, again, I, I say, I emphasize it was not a lot of adjustment. I did make a, a tiny bit of adjustment. The other thing I did was I lowered the action by taking each of the screws, there are two screws on each saddle, and I took each of those screws and I reduced the height of the saddle by one turn each. So that was 12 screws, and I 
Once I did that, it felt perfect to me. The guitar itself plays like a dream, I think. I would say it's right on par with some of my favorite guitars. Among those would be my, right now, and probably forever, six. PRS CE24 Dusty Waring models. I consider that to be the pinnacle, in my opinion, of perfect guitars. So this is right up there with it. I would not put this equal with those guitars because of this non-floating vibrato bridge. Uh, this is a dive bomb only. Now, if you're nerdy enough to have watched the video my, on my Kaizen 7, you'll have noticed that there's a comment in there. Somebody asked, well, what about making it a floating bridge? And I commented, my response to that was that I made an entire video about turning that Kaizen 7 dive bomb only bridge into a floating bridge. And I had it that way for about three days. The problem was that it's not made to do that. And even after letting it settle for three days, I could never get the guitar to obtain tuning stability. It just would not stay in tune. I, I couldn't keep it stable. So the theory seems sound. If you just raise it off a slightly off the body, right? You can give it a little bit of back action, but it didn't matter because once I did that, I could not get the guitar to stay in tune no matter what I did. And I really wanted to. I made an entire video out of that, but I just scrapped it because, right? It wasn't viable. So why bother with the video? But other than that, the things that make this guitar unique that I haven't already mentioned are we have in the bridge position, we have a, an HT pickup. HT stands for heat treated, again, TM. At the end of that, it's a trademark. Or I assume that it's a trademark. What about the, the pickup is heat treated? That's, I'm sure that's up for some debate. I haven't really scoured YouTube to find out whether somebody's done a lot of critical analysis of that. I did a little bit of critical analysis in my last video. What I recorded, my little rant about HT was a lot longer than what I actually edited um, into the video. It was very short, but I had quite a bit in there because I'd done a, lot, a bit of background to try to figure out what HT really represents. The best I can tell with Ernie Ball Music Man, because they're very cagey and they're very vague about what HT means, is they cook the magnetic pole piece somehow, and they claim that it makes an improvement. Now, the reality is whatever heat treating they do, if that in fact plays a significant role, I'm sure is much more extensive than that. And the reason they're probably vague and cagey is because it's some proprietary process and they're not gonna spill the beans on that. But the fact that they have an entire video about HT up on YouTube and they essentially you get to the end of the video and you go like, I haven't learned a fucking thing about HT. So, you know, that's my criticism. It is marketing, it's hype. I will say this, that the pickups are fantastic. I don't have a guitar that has both a bridge and a neck HT pickup, but if the bridge pickup in this one is any indication, then the HT pickups are just fantastic. I love the pickups in this guitar. <laughs> Among the other features that are unique about this guitar, the Steinberger designed tuners. The top, the guitar has what look like the, it almost looks like the tuners themselves here at the top. Those are actually not where you turn. You don't turn these to tune your strings, even though it looks like that's what would be the case. In fact, this is what you do to lock the string into its little well, for lack of a better term. You stick the guitar end into it, you boom, you lock it down there. It's nice and locked solid. It's on the back, it's on the back of the headstock. Not easy to see here. Let me see if I can get a better angle. Yes. Yeah, not gonna work out no matter what I do here. Anyway, these are they're knurled knobs on the back, one to one ratio. They are stiff when you turn them, not unpleasantly so, because as I said, it's direct, it's a direct drive, it's one to one ratio. Um but they're nice. I like them. They're it really causes it's it's about there probably is no more stable tuners on the market. I don't know how there could be, because it's just direct drive. The knob itself is the tuner. So there's not even a gear, a secondary gear like you would get if you had your tuners on the side, right? Where it's, you know, underneath the hood, there's a little wheel in there that's got, that's, that's notched and you have these interlocking wheels. One turns the other. In this case, it's one knob, you turn it, it's direct drive. But I like the tuners and I would put them on other guitars if I could buy them separately. 
The neck itself, to me, feels neither fat nor too thin. So it's just right. I think they did a good job of trying to find something that would be reasonable for pretty much any guitar player. The pickups themselves. So I mentioned already that I like the pickups. Well, that's an understatement. I not only like the pickups, I find this guitar to be the most versatile guitar I own that has two pickups and only three position toggle switch. I do have other guitars that have two pickups, but, I, but in those cases they have, for example, a five position toggle switch, like on my Dusty Waring PRS CE24 guitars. You can get a variety of tones out of just two pickups there, but it has five position toggle switch. This has only three. I have other guitars, like a new, one of the new headless Ibanez guitars, the ones that are go for around $1,100, $1,200. I've got one of those, I might do a video on that one. But that, for example, has 10 different sounds you can get out of that, depending on its five-way position, its five-way switch and the secondary switch that it has. So it has up to, uh, you know, basically 10 sounds. This one has two pickups, three position toggle switch, and in that configuration, it is, my opinion, by far the most varied tonally of any guitar that I have with that configuration. An example. So here is the neck. Middle. Bridge. What can I say? It's amazing. That is a lot of variety in a single guitar, two pickups, three position toggle switch. I don't think you're gonna beat that anywhere. So if you're looking for a guitar that is in this price range and you're comfortable spending this kind of money on a guitar, then this might be the guitar for you. It is very lightweight. It only comes in at about six and a quarter pounds, I think this one does. Though I have seen the variety of weights for these on Sweetwater. I have seen them from anywhere from about six and a quarter up to just shy of seven and a half. Still a pretty lightweight guitar, but I find this to be probably the lightest weight guitar I have, with maybe the exception of the new Ibanez headless guitar that I have. I think that one is slightly lighter than this one because it doesn't have a, you know, it doesn't have a head, headstock. But this one, it probably comes in second then at about six and a quarter. The only guitar that I've ever owned that was lighter than that was probably Strandberg, I think. And the Ibanez guitar rivals Strandberg. It's probably about the same weight as, uh, as a Strandberg, somewhere just over five pounds, which is a very lightweight guitar. All right, so let's get into a couple more sound samples. I've been using my Axe FX3 Mark II, a Fender Tremolo Deluxe style patch with a customized delay. The delay I've customized to mimic what I love about my Keeley Halo delay pedal. So I'm going to step through once again, just a couple of chords that I've already played, but I want to once, once again emphasize the variety of tones you can get out of this single guitar. Two pickups, three position toggle switch. So we'll start with the neck. So that's it. 
thanks so much for stopping by. This has been the review of the Kaizen 6 in beautiful mint, baby bluish sort of color. And if you enjoy this video, please hit that like button and also please subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you can be aware of when I have a new video that comes out. I have lots of ideas, lots of things I want to cover in video and uh, also things I just want to talk about. Things that aren't necessarily equipment based, but lots of other things about learning and for example, I'm a left-hander on right-handed guitar. That's a video all to itself, etc. So if you uh, are interested in that kind of stuff, please hit the subscribe button and turn on those notifications. That way you can know when I have a new video that comes out. So thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.